What is up, party people? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila. This is Jamila Be Readin' because I do be reading. And today, as you can see from my nifty little apron, we're baking. We're baking. You've probably seen on my channel that I posted a medievalathon. Uh, TBR video. So I thought I would come here and do a little wrap up video while baking because I was attempting to do the baker prompt. So I thought, why not bake something while talking about these books? And let's just say right off the bat, I freaking failed Medieval Thought. I read two books. One of them wasn't initially in my TBR at all. Uh, so there's that. So I'm just going to be talking about two books. Uh, a hot mess. Honestly, the end of January through honestly most of February so far, I've been kind of in a reading slump, so it's been a little bit difficult to keep up with everything. But you know what? That's fine. I read two books. I read two books. So the first book that I read was the second book in the From Blood and Ash series from A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, I think is what that book is called. I... I'm constantly getting these names confused. Also, I really hope that my camera is in focus right now. I've been having a lot of issues with my camera not being in focus. And if I film this whole video and it turns out it wasn't in focus, y'all are just going to watch it anyway, right? Because, oh man, I'm not filming this again. But anyways, the second book that I read was Black Buck by Matteo Ascaripor. Um, yeah. So I'm going to talk about those, but let's talk about what I plan on baking so i was scrolling through tiktok as one does and a lot of the stuff that ends up on my for you page is baking things because i like to bake so <laughs> tiktok knows me and i found this matcha mochi cupcake or muffin recipe i'll go ahead and link the original video down below and then i'll also do a list of the ingredients because uh she kind of messed up and had to comment down below. So it's kind of all over the place. So I'll just put it succinctly. I think she's planning on starting like a recipe blog. I'll just link her information down below. I don't think the blog is up yet, but I would direct you to that if I could. But anyways, I am going to be making matcha mochi muffins. I've never made this before. It's supposed to be gluten free, which is good for me. I have this mochiko sweet rice flour. I've never used it before. We'll see how this goes. It looks good. I actually prepped my most of my ingredients before filming this because I am honestly a chaotic baker. Honestly, a lot of me is chaotic, but anyways. So I'm going to be looking at my phone a lot probably to like reference the recipe, but let's talk about A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire because what a hot mess that. <laughs> that book was. I don't know from my Goodreads Choice Award winners video that I read and thoroughly enjoyed from Blood and Ash, surprisingly. It's actually like substantively and quality wise not great, but I enjoyed it anyway. And so I was excited to continue on to the next book. I got it from my library and I decided to use it for the prompt. Uh, a book that someone chose for you. Now, initially, I was going to read this self-published book that I had on my Kindle that I had a friend pick out for me, but I decided my library decided what I was going to read, okay? Because the book just came in out of nowhere, and I was like, oh, crap, let me go ahead and get this read because I know other people had it on hold, so I wasn't going to be able to, like, continue to renew it. So I read that, and man, what a disappointment. I mean, I don't know why I was expecting much out of it anyway, but it was, what? It was a lot of nothing. It was a whole lot of fucking nothing, okay? But anyways, let's pause for a second. I put um, some melted butter in my bowl here, a fourth of a cup of but uh, melted butter. Let's see what's next. Okay, we're gonna do two eggs. So, the second book, man, it's been a little bit since I read it, but the second book starts off almost immediately after the first book ends. And by the way, I'm going to spoil both of the books that I'm talking about. I maybe should have prepped some writing or some points that I wanted to talk about, but 
I like to live life on the edge. So I'm just going to talk about whatever comes to me as I am <laughs> putting this together. But it picks up immediately after the second book where whatever his face, Hawk, a.k.a. Prince Castile, uh, a.k.a. I don't know, Prince of Darkness. Well, I forgot whatever n name he had. Also, I have a cup of coffee here, but he's like, we're going to get married. And she's like, what the fuck? So we pick up right after that. And she's basically still kind of held hostage at the beginning. But then she comes around, of course, because she's like into him or whatever. And he's into her. I don't know. Like this book just didn't do anything. I don't I, I couldn't tell you what the plot was. The main part of the story that pushes the plot forward for the next book happened probably within like the last hundred pages of this book. And this book is over 600 pages long. So there was just a whole lot of Poppy wandering around, being in her feelings, discovering that the things that she's been told all her life weren't true and being shocked by it, even though she had her suspicions this whole time. I don't know, it was all over the place. And all of the thoughts I had about Poppy being really self-aware and actually like a really interesting character like kind of went out the window in this book because it was just a lot of her moping around for 600 pages. Nothing was really happening. We didn't see a lot of character development for her. Obviously, she like comes to the conclusion that... Well, Why is there an airplane? Okay, but anyway, she comes to the conclusion that yeah, obviously she's being lied to, all this shit is going on, all this bad stuff, blah, blah, blah. And, but that's like really the only thing that happens with her character. She doesn't really like grow. Nothing really develops between her and Hawk slash Kaz because I don't know, they're just constantly in this weird situation. <sighs> the one thing is I'm very curious about her like lineage and her family history and like her mom and dad because she develops like these weird ass powers that don't get explained. I'm guessing because it's gonna get explained in the next book, but she like is like glowing and she can start like healing people or something like that. Like this dude straight up like his leg went Mah. Okay, and she healed that with the quickness and I was just like, what's going on? I'm having a hard time. And that's the thing about this series as a whole and this is where it kind of starts to suffer in the second book. Not even starts to suffer, it's been suffering, but it's like really prevalent in the second book is that the world building doesn't make any sense to me. There's like a lack of world building and what we're given is all over the place where it's hard for me to put together the pieces if I were trying to figure out what's going on. So I'm just sitting here waiting for it to just be told to me, essentially, instead of me like, okay, what do I know about this world and about how things work? And I can try to piece it together. I may be wrong, but at least I have like some things to pull from. That's just not the case because like we're only told things like need to know, which I don't think is good like world building personally. So there's that. I've been rambling. Let me get back into this. So I have the fourth of a cup of melted butter and two eggs. I'm going to be adding half a cup of granulated sugar. This is basically like sugar in the raw. That's all I had, but I think it'll work fine. And then I'm also going to be adding a half a cup of like packed brown sugar. Next, I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then I'm going to mix. Sorry you guys can't see this. I was planning on having like my uh, phone to film me baking while I had my camera filming me while I was talking. But I, when I bake things that I've never made before, like I check the recipe like so many times and like if there's a video, I watch it over and over again. So I just needed my phone for that. So uh, sorry about that. But yeah, all of uh, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire or whatever just like didn't really work for me that much. Okay, so I just mixed those ingredients together and it should like look like like this, you know? Um, but yeah, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire did not work for me. And I mean, a lot of that had to do with just like the setup in the first book didn't really lend itself to being a series if you will man and you know the thing is these are supposed to be like 
heavily focused on the romance fantasy kind of secondary is at least how I think of the romance fantasy genre but the romance was so dull like like I mentioned nothing really happens developmental wise between Poppy and Hawk I mean eventually at the end they're like ride or die for each other or whatever but it wasn't an interesting romance development to witness you know they just kind of suddenly are fine because she realizes that she's been lied to and also he's hot and right there so I mean I don't know I don't really get why Poppy likes him I guess I do a little bit but I don't really get why Hawk likes her because we're not in his head and that's another thing I think I mentioned this when I talked about the first book is that the it's only from Poppy's perspective and I think it really could have helped to have Hawk's perspective in there honestly it could have helped to have just like multi POV in this story it's so long I cannot stop harping on the fact that this book was so long for no reason okay absolutely no reason 600 pages of nothing happened okay it didn't need to be that long it needed to be tighter honestly it probably needed like another round or two of editing because when I tell you nothing really happens in this story like nothing really happens okay it's really easy to get through but god 600 pages why and so, and we're all in Poppy's head for all of that too. So it was just her just wandering around and I'm like, girl, please, I need something else. Like I need a pers- I need Hawk's perspective. I need a perspective from maybe someone from the Ascended or some shit like that. Like I needed something to zhuzh up this story because I was quite frankly bored the entire time. But I will be reading the third one, obviously. Like I'm in it now. I'm curious because you know, the one thing that uh, JLR or JLA, <laughs> the one thing that JLA <laughs> has done <laughs> is that both of these books ended in a cliffhanger, like a massive cliffhanger. And I'm like, of course you did, because if it didn't, I would not be continuing with this series. But anyway, those are my thoughts on Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. 2.5 stars, you know, not great. Not great at all. Okay. Let us continue with the bacon, the bacon, the baking. Okay, now I'm adding coconut cream, about six ounces, which amounts to, I believe, um, three quarters of a cup, according to Google. So hopefully that's right, because I do not have a scale to measure this. Okay, next up, I'm gonna open this can of evaporated milk another six ounces of that so this can here is five ounces and i didn't realize i needed six until after i bought this so i added just like a teeny bit more of that coconut cream i don't know if that's gonna do anything but whatever okay so i'm gonna just add this all right so let me just mix this together okay so next up i'm going to be adding the mochiko flour um, in the video, it says one cup, but that's the part where I think she messed up when she wrote the instructions or the ingredients list. I think it needs to be two cups. So we're going to do that. Okay, so I added one cup and I'm just going to stir this real quick first. Now we're going to do the second cup. This is looking a bit thick, so I might add a little bit of that coconut liquid. Okay, so I added the sweet rice flour or the mochiko flour i'd say two cups might be a little bit too much maybe do like one and a half or one and three quarters i ended up adding a little bit of the coconut water bits that were in this coconut cream to liquefy it just a little bit this is what it looks like so far it's kind of like pancake batter a little bit um so next i'm gonna add the matcha i just got this matcha green tea powder from trader joe's comes apparently in these single serve packets which is kind of annoying um but it says two to three tablespoons of matcha powder so i think i'll do like 
two. I don't know how much is in this packet, so. These packets do not have that much in it. <laughs> Probably gonna have to use like four of these. The next book that I read for Medievalathon was Black Buck by Matteo Oscaripor. I started this like at the end of January and honestly I didn't finish it until... <sighs> when did I finish it? A few days ago at this point? Uh, it took me a while to read one because I was in a reading slump but two it took me a while to like adjust to the like satirical writing style also I was just fucking angry almost the entire time reading this book my god <laughs> I was like buck you need to get your shit together you need to tell these white people to shut the fuck up and whoo my god I was I was angry I was very I'm <laughs> very angry reading this book. Black Buck is basically a satire satirical novel that's kind of written like a how to um, self-help slash uh, autobiography or memoir style and so it took a bit for me to adjust to that but afterwards it was really good. I also ended up checking out the audiobook because I found out that it is narrated by Zena Robinson who is uh does primarily voice acting for like anime and some video games but I think he's really cool and I wanted to support him so I ended up checking out the audiobook and it was so well done I'm not much of an audiobook person like at all really I just get too distracted uh to listen to them so I'd rather just just sit down and read but I ended up listening to that while I like cooked or took a shower and stuff like that so uh but yeah I really enjoyed this book I gave it five stars maybe 4.5 stars but man like it was a well crafted story about <laughs> About a lot of things. So basically it follows Darren Vender, who is a young, in his early 20s, um, Starbucks employee. He's like a shift manager or something like that. And he, did I do too much? And he ends up through, basically a stroke of luck, ends up getting this sales position with this startup company called Someone, spelled S-U-M w u n it's really strange but damn he goes to this place and he's facing microaggression macroaggression straight up racism like there's a running joke where all of the white people keep saying like oh you look like this one famous black person denzel washington like kendrick lamar all these random ass people and he just looks like nothing like them but um he ends up getting this job and he is just going through it at this place like the whole time i'm just like yelling at this book like leave you don't need this place you don't need this place but the thing is he didn't even want this job because um he was like really content he was getting paid decently at his starbucks job and it gave him a lot of free time to just like fuck around be with his girl he lives at home with his mom and this nice brownstone in brooklyn is it brooklyn i don't remember where no bed -Stuy. and so he is like set like they own the brownstone he's chilling he has his whole top floor to himself it's a vibe right and i'm i'm sitting here too like yeah like just chill like you're good i don't know why you don't need to do all of that and he never went to college too so his mom is uh just like constantly like kind of harping on him to like be better go to school like do all this shit same with his girl so everyone around him is just like kind of pressuring him to accept this position and to like make something out of himself so he does and this place like <laughs> ain't shit like oh my god it was so terrible i would have left after the first day personally but he stuck it out i don't know why and it ends up becoming like his whole life like his whole personality he lets oh and the thing is like everyone at this job calls him buck which is supposed to be short for starbucks because that's where he worked but it's like they i think that's what they also called like black men during slave auctions and stuff like that so it's like a whole like connotation and shit like that anyway so 
So he basically takes up this portion of Buck. He's shucking and jiving for these people, okay? Exhibiting coon behavior a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And ends up pushing everyone out of his life, his mom. And his mom is like, suffering from some health issues because she works at like this factory where there's a lot of chemicals his girl everybody his best friend everyone he's pushing them out pushing them out and they're just like yo like what what's up like why are you why are you being like this but it's funny too because he they were the ones pushing him to this job he didn't want to take it and now that he's doing it and excelling and kind of like taking on this persona they don't like him but it's a bad persona, so I get it. At the same time, it's like you see both sides because on one hand, he was content just living his life, you know, just chilling. But then he got pressured by everyone to go make something out of himself. And when he goes and makes something out of himself, they're not happy with it. But the cost that it takes to make something out of himself in this context is that he's pushing his friends and family away. He's forgetting where he came from. He's like the only black person, only person of color in this place. He's letting a lot of things slide. He's doing a lot of like nasty shit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, there's that. Um, anyway, so I added this two <laughs> tablespoons of matcha. This is what it looks like, hella green. I think I need to add a tablespoon of baking powder. Okay, I don't have that much baking powder left. So I'm gonna just dump this all in here. Hopefully that's enough. It's actually more baking powder. Okay, so I added roughly a tablespoon of baking powder. And let me add some of this salt. I'm gonna do a fourth of a or a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. I'll mix this up. I feel like this still looks thicker than hers. Let me look at this. Also, this matcha powder is so much greener than hers. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of this coconut water. So that is everything. <laughs> this is what the final mixture looks like. Now I'm just gonna spray the muffin tins so that it doesn't stick uh but yeah so this story is kind of split up into different parts but kind of like the turning point for buck is when um basically someone ends up going through a lot of trouble basically i never explained what someone is so someone is like well that's the thing what even is someone basically it's kind of like better help <laughs> if you're familiar with what that is like online therapy uh with like you know counselors and stuff like that except with someone um they never verified or had any like rigorous uh testing or search process for who was a counselor or helper for the people and they're trying to sell uh this like package deal or something to different companies for their employees. And so basically a 16 year old black girl ends up going to China where uh, one of the counselors is who was helping her. He told her like, come to China and um, I will be able to like do like better treatment for you or some shit like that. So she basically ends up leaving without telling her parents, going to China, and he ends up murdering her when she gets there. And so this just like sends someone, the company, into like a whole lot of trouble in the media. There's like an FBI investigation going on. And so they're basically about to just like lose this entire company and buck after his mom passes away from her she ended up having like stage four lung cancer and she never told him so he ends up just like in a bit of desperation because everything's falling apart around him he ends up securing a deal with some dude named barry who's like a big business person and ends up saving someone we skip forward like six months later and he's like popping he's a businessman he's living in nice apartment in Manhattan, all of this stuff. And uh, Barry wants a new seller or something like that. So he ends up training this dude from Starbucks that he used to work at. And it just turns into this big thing called the Happy Campers or something like that, where basically it's like a whole like network situation where Buck as well as, not Buck, Darren, as well as some of the initial people that he trained to be like good sellers, um, end up training other people. It's basically trying to get like, people of color 
into the startup tech whatever business industry giving them the tools and resources and then like helping each other out and it just turns into this whole thing and, and then this ugly ass dumb ass nasty ass dude named clint from someone who ended up getting who left or some for some reason i forgot he ends up starting this like white alliance of something of sellers or something like that and is like saying all this nasty ass racist shit about the happy campers blah 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 it, like comes to a head there's like this whole thing and then fucking darren ends up in jail like <laughs> i'm i'm losing my train of thought here you're probably not following along i'm hoping that if you're watching this <laughs> you've read the book because i've just spoiled a ton of stuff but it was wild and i think the like last when it switches to like the happy camper stuff it like starts to lose its flow a little bit but overall like the story is so well crafted like i've never been so angry in my life before <laughs> okay reading a book i was just sitting here like dude what are you doing and i'm angry for him as well like all of these nasty ass people like doing all this racist shit to him and whoo okay but yeah it's basically just supposed to be a commentary on like tech and business culture how white it is and how much of a like boys club daddy got me this job type of situation it is and yeah anytime you try to like succeed and like help each other out with these resources like they're always trying to get you keep you down you know what i'm saying so there's that <laughs> I thought it was really good. That was kind of like a chaotic <laughs> thought process about this book. I'm hoping to write a more succinct review on Instagram. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But yeah. But anyways, really good. 4.5, five stars. Highly recommend it. I am so excited to see what Matteo Ascari Poor will write next. I believe this was his debut. I am now just going to put this in the muffin tins. I basically didn't get to a lot of the other books that I wanted to read. Like, I know I wanted to read These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Never got around to reading that. I wanted to read Riot Baby by Tochi Onibuchi. Didn't get around to that either. I wanted to, like, finish reading my reread of the Graceling series and then read Winter Keep because that just came out. Didn't get to that either. It's been uh, <laughs> a rough reading month or so for me and I've been really busy with school too mainly what I've been doing is re-watching the MCU because WandaVision has just reignited my <laughs> my interest in the MCU so there's that and I've been re-watching it I have watched so many I have uh three more left or four more technically with Spider-Man far from home i'm probably going to finish that this weekend my rewatch and i am so excited for wandavision wow are you guys watching it because it is wild <laughs> i have never been so engaged in a show in such a long time honestly i am just here you know that picture of charlie from always sunny uh, where he's just like has all the maps and the strings and he's just like this like that's me <laughs> every week I'm just like trying to figure out what's going on with WandaVision um wow you know okay so I have a little bit left over I have these in the muffin pan but I don't have another muffin tin but I have these teeny little like bunt cake pans so I think I might put the leftovers in this and see how that turns out <laughs> yeah i'm kind of running out of things to say here <laughs> i only read two books so i only have so much to say you know but i guess my question to you all is did you participate in medieval athon and if so what did you read did you fail like me or did you actually complete the challenges what which occupation were you trying to do let me know um I know I haven't done a wrap-up video in a long time. I haven't done one for December or January, but I've been having some technical difficulties. Like I told y'all, my camera has been trifling and has not been staying in focus. I really hope 
this <laughs> last hour of me baking has been in focus for y'all because I'm not going to re-record this, obviously. I've been having so many technical difficulties with filming them for some reason, so I just haven't uploaded those. So I think uh, I'm just going to leave it at that, and I will resume in February. There's probably not going to be a lot on there because I have not really been reading. But I'm going to go ahead and put the muffins and this little bunt situation in the oven. Okay, so I put that in the oven, and I think it's supposed to go in there for 25 to 30 minutes at 350 degrees. So I'll be setting my timer for 25 minutes, and I'll check in on that then. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wash up my mess that I made, <laughs> and I will catch y'all in the next video um there will be an insert i will insert a picture now of what the muffins ended up looking like or a little video it'll be right here but otherwise i will catch y'all in the next video mm -hmm.